Hey guys, today we're going to be cleaning a sensor, or more appropriately, the filters that are directly above the sensor. I don't like calling it sensor cleaning, so to speak, and I'll explain why. Uh, for the sensor cleaning, it's going to depend on what size sensor you have in your camera. And I'm using the uh, Visible Dust Sensor Cleaning Kit Mini. This one is for full frame. It's important that you get uh, the one for your camera because the width of this swab right here is going to vary. And if you get the full frame one for an a APS-C camera, then obviously it's too wide to cover the sensor. So that's important. Um, I've opened this already. This is this has been opened. So, but this is the product I use. It's not real expensive. It's about mid-range, and it works really well. I use this Carson SM44 sensor mag. And this thing is really awesome. What makes this one in particular really great is that the top swings out so that it's not very obstructive when you go to do your cleaning. And I'll show you that in the video. Um, you obviously need a blower. I use these medical ones because they don't have as much air pressure behind them. And if you could do a macro of somebody blowing air against a camera sensor, it's a lot like a dust storm. It's horrible. And um, for that reason, you always want to start as far back as, as you can and work your way towards it. Don't just stick it up in there and start blowing it straight away. I use one with very low pressure because I don't like pushing uh, particulates across glass. It's, it's never a good idea. So with my Canon 6D, it will not let me clean the sensor without a freshly charged battery. The reason for that is it's a safety protocol in the camera to prevent the mirror from swinging back down during cleaning and that would be just detrimental. You don't want that, trust me. So you need a fully charged battery before you start. Now where sensor cleaning is located, you have to consult your manual. It's different on most cameras. But on this particular camera, you will find it in the fourth wrench icon under your menu. And there's sensor cleaning. There's auto cleaning, enable, clean now, clean manually. Clean manually is the one that we want. And if you'll notice inside the camera here, you see the mirrors in the downward position. If I was to say, okay, there you go. Now, most of these sensor cleaning videos that you'll find on YouTube use about the same method that I do, but something to help encourage you to try this yourself is to make a note that I don't know why it's called sensor cleaning because you're technically, you're not cleaning the sensor. There's a filter in front of the sensor itself. And as a matter of fact, uh, I was asked a question recently from one of my viewers about Astro modded cameras, especially naked sensor modifications where the sensor is exposed. In the Canon EOS series, there's actually a small thin film directly on top of the sensor called an anti-aliasing filter. So even then, you're not actually making direct contact to the sensor. So, uh, Technically, you're, you're never actually making contact with the sensor. And that's an important note to make that I haven't seen anywhere else. And that's just to help encourage you to try to do this yourself because sending these things in to the manufacturer to have it done, although you know, you're gonna get a, a professional technical uh, cleaning, it takes time and, and uh, your camera to a photographer should be much like a katana to a samurai. I mean, basically you sleep with it. I can't count the number of times that a situation occurred where I said, man, I wish I had my camera. I mean, the best camera you have is the one you left at home pretty much. So anyway, let's take a look at this uh, sensor cleaning light and I'll show you why that's such a good thing to have, be able to magnify.
but this is basically how you'll get this product. There are instructions and recommendations about cleaning sensors included. But it comes in this nice little case here. And if the battery was ever to die, you can replace that also. It takes one of those small wafer types like a, a watch does. And this is what it looks like. And you can focus it here. And on the bottom here, you notice there's like a track and that can be adjusted. Pretty much universal. Um, the way it's gonna work is it's going to set up here like this and you can rotate it so that it's not in the way of this lock right here but with it on you can see how bright it is it's, it's really bright and what I mentioned earlier about it swinging out was the part that magnifies actually swings to the side 45 degrees and that's so you can just keep this in place and do your work and then quickly reference it to see if you've got all the dust. Okay, so this is what you can expect to see looking into your sensor. I'm sorry, sorry it's a little shaky. I'm having to hold this. Um, you see what appears to be some dust specks there in the center. Make sure you rotate your magnifier around to make sure that's not just a light source from outside. If I put my hand over the top of it, it kind of goes away. That's actually some flaring from a side light I have, but you can see just how visible the surface is here. Um, another tip, I'm pretty sure you've probably watched Peter McKinnon's version of sensor cleaning where he recommended uh, running your shower hot so you, you can take the dust particulates out of the air kind of like work like a humidifier I personally don't like to waste a lot of water so if you have a cheap uh, baby humidifier like what you would use in a in a nursery that works just fine in a small room to make a, a clean room but it's really hard to demonstrate. Okay, right there, bottom left corner, you see those two specks of dust there? And first I'm gonna attempt to blow them off before I ever wipe the sensor. Um, my sensor's relatively clean. I, I do this maybe once every couple months, depending on, on where I'm shooting and that sort of thing. But you can see down in the bottom left corner there, there's two little specks of dust, and I'm going to see if I can get them with the blower first. So again, as I said before, I, I don't like a lot of air pressure, so I'm going to start way back here like this. I know it's in that bottom left corner. I'm going to kind of rotate the camera around as I blow and move inwards towards it and see if I can't remove it that way. So if you don't have to make contact, then you shouldn't. But for uh, you Astro guys, especially if you're not using a filter, say you have this on a Newtonian, you know about tube currents and that sort of thing. I mean, it, your telescope is working like a giant vacuum in a sense, and it's pulling a lot of dust down and in towards your, your camera sensor. So. Uh, wildlife guys and astro guys most likely are going to be have a lot dirtier camera sensor people who work outside landscape and that sort of thing especially around uh, salt water or what whatnot or guys who shoot primes over zooms where you change your lens a lot and you're doing that in the field whether it be the city or or out in the woods or whatnot you're you're introducing the opportunity for particulates to get in there and spring is especially bad with with pollen and that sort of thing but let's see if we if we knock that dust out okay I think that was enough to get it 
and that's the point that I'm trying to make here is that you don't always have to do a really uh, detailed cleaning with the solution and that sort of thing but I'm going to show you how to prep that now and do a couple passes anyway just to uh, to help you out because that's what this video is it's a sensor cleaning video so we'll do that now so in your packet you should find sensor cleaning solution and you'll have your swab now after we use this we're going to throw this away you do not want to risk pulling a dirty swab across the optical elements inside of your camera there's a close-up of the swab itself I treat this like it's a surgical tool because it is in fact sterile and when you open this be careful don't put your hands on that part of it you've got your cleaning solution and your swab and you're just going to slightly dampen it I'll let mine set a minute you don't have to do both sides just your working side Okay, I'm just gonna set this on a sensor with no pressure at all and pull to one side and pull it out I'm gonna position this where it's not gonna be in my way actually let me take it off completely I can show you maybe more detailed what I'm doing here I like to rest my pinky finger here. I've got shaky hands. That's just a curse that, that I live with. And the older you get, the worse it gets in some cases. Uh, no pressure, one side to the other. And that's got it. That is clean, that is super clean. You can reinspect it before you throw your swab out. Have a look back inside and see if everything looks good to you double triple check and uh, should be good to go take this guy here throw it in the trash and uh, if you run out of them or use some more looking pretty good um, as I said you don't need a whole lot of pressure you're just gonna make two passes and then toss it in the trash very simple don't be scared of this the reason that you don't put much solution on it which is what somebody or most people fail to mention why is because your sensor with all of its filters that are on top of it are kind of sandwiched together and if you have any excessive amount of fluid then it will leak down between the two optical elements and then you will have a problem so very minimum amount of fluid in fact uh, the sensor cleaning fluid itself is designed to evaporate rather quickly so as another note the minute you saturate it uh, you want to get started I was a little slow in this video because I'm trying to make a demonstration but you saturate it and then immediately you will uh, start your cleaning process but that's all there is to it folks it's, it's nothing to be scared of it's something you can do yourself and like I said, if you send it in to a technician, whatever brand you have, you're going to be waiting because there's the shipping time, then there's the cost for the cleaning service itself when you can buy these relatively cheap. You can see all you need to see. You can create your own clean environment and you can do this yourself. Now with the Canon brand camera, when you're done, all you do is you, uh, you just switch the power off and that's going to drop your mirror back down. So that's all there is to that. May be different with uh, with your model camera. Additionally, you won't find this recommended because it's not what this is for, but these actually work really good on your mirror also. It's really light amount of pressure there. Get a really clean surface on your reflective mirror there. As far as the, the camera body itself goes, there's obviously parts that you can remove like this eye cup I generally just use the lens wipes for this part um, just remove any excess oil from your fingers and that sort of thing that's built up over time you don't need any special cleaning solution for this you just don't want to spray anything directly on the camera obviously uh, but 
just a general cleaning. You should already know how to do all that. Maintain your equipment. Um, I should have showed you earlier, but prior to um, the sensor cleaning, we could have took a small Q-tip and cleaned around the contact points because uh, as you turn lenses in and out, there are very small pieces of metal and debris that get up inside of these ridges here. Um, obviously, never touch the contacts. And uh, I'll add one more thing, that dreaded Air 99. I can't tell you the amount of lenses that I've purchased on the cheap, and uh, especially in cases where people thought they were getting over on me because they had a faulty lens, uh, where just a number two pencil eraser to the contacts cured the problem. I know my videos are kind of dry. I've been accused of sounding like Eugene from Walking Dead and and uh, there's not a lot of humor. I'm a very technical person. I don't know how to be uh, really outgoing. You know, I'm not a entertainer, so to speak, but to liven things up a little bit, I'll throw this in there. <laughs> 